today we are going to be going on a free walking tour of Budapest. See some of the sites of our history. I'm sure I've done this at least once, if not twice, but I don't remember anything about it. So let's go. Here's my tram. Oh, well, I got off the wrong station, but this is beautiful. This is Hero Square, guys. Oops, I guess I was going the wrong direction on this tram. So I'm gonna go back seven stops now. Yeah, it's gotta see this. Really blue. Oh, this guy's trying to go, but it's a green light stand. Look at this. Here we go. Never get on these. These are the stupidest things in the world. You don't learn anything. It's easier just to walk, walk around. Turn back on, yes. Well, I'm here and I think I see the girl. But I don't see any other customers, so hopefully she's not waiting for just me. Is it that girl with the flag? No, it has to be this one on the left. There's definitely a bigger group on the left. This one has a sign. Oh, there's more people showing up. So I'm not the only one that's late. Oh, there's a huge one there. Walkative? Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, good morning. Is it uh, walkative? As you walk it, if you can book it. Yeah, yeah. yeah can please it. join us. This is our Okay, thank you. Actually, uh, our center of population in Budapest uh, was German speaking. Really. It was either from, from Germany or from Austria. Why is that? Then the city was recaptured from the, from the Ottomans, end of the 1600s. It was basically a very, very heavy, very bloody fight. And basically everyone died in the capital. So the population count of Buda, the capital of Hungary, after the Ottoman invasion was 241 people. That's it. That's how many people survived. So the whole city was empty and a lot of settlers moved in here. And the settlers firstly moved in here, not just from Hungary, from the countryside, but also from Croatia, but mostly from Germany and from Austria. Guys, look at this. Beautiful. So this is the Hungarian Basilica, it's the biggest church in Hungary. And what's really crazy is it's well known for the mummification of the Holy Right and the Holy Left. The Holy Right is literally the right arm of the first king of, uh, of Hungary. Kind of weird, but you know, that happens when you mummify, mummify kings. But the Holy Left is actually the left foot of a soccer player, the captain of the football team from the 50s. How insane is that? Yeah, any questions? Yeah, why the fuck are they mummifying someone's foot? It's so weird. It is a beautiful building though. Probably built by the... Yeah. Oh. We didn't cut it off. Like, that, like, that would have been a little bit too weird. But, uh, but actually, these are just the two guys in total in, in the whole history who are buried inside. First thing. Oh. And, and the, and the, Okay, you know what? They, they didn't cough his foot. They just buried him in there. <laughs> but still, it's crazy. And architecturally, who built it? Uh, actually, three architects. Oh. Uh, basically, the three most important Hungarian architects uh, Joseph Hilt. Oh. Uh, the other one is. Uh, so he, the, Joseph Hilt, he was the first person who gave it the classical look, uh, uh -huh, the right. neoclassical design. This, is, this was the base. And then he died. And then another guy took over. And he, Build, uh, continue to build in a Renaissance okay. design, and his name is uh, Miklos Ibru. Right. All Hungarians. Nice. All Hungarians. All the wow. three Hungarians. Yeah. Okay. All three Hungarians. So it's cool that uh, this church was the basilica was built by Hungarians because a lot of the architecture you see here are actually built by Austrians, the Germans, uh, all the baths built by the, the Romans. So you have a lot of culture that has come here, including the food. So it turns out the most famous dishes that we'll maybe have later, uh, paprika is not originally from Hungary, it's from Turkey. This is probably very similar to Vienna, yeah? Yeah, there are quite a few varieties, although Vienna looks different. Yeah, like to me it looks the same. Like these buildings, no? 
He brings back so take a selfie with him, take a picture. Uh, I'm going to explain why it's important. Still need to have some Hungarian food before I go. Uh, surprising fact now, nowadays, uh, Budapest is rather a poor country considering European standards. Believe it or not, up until the First World War, Hungary was one of the richest countries. It was in the top five for many, many centuries. I think the most important Hungarian person ever lived was uh, the one whom the big bath was named after, maybe you remember his name, Széchenyi. Okay? He was a rich aristocrat, 19th century, and now we remember Hungary back then was very rich. It was a very prosperous country, so half the country belonged to him. He had an unbelievable amount of money, and he traveled a lot. So it turns out the name Hungarians is actually a misunderstanding. Kind of how like Americans will call Native Americans Indians, or um, you know other examples in the past. When the Hungarians came, they were a different tribe called the Moros, but because they were confused with Attila the Hun, uh, who had previously come here, they just, they just referred to them as Hungarians, and they've stuck. Well, we're lucky today, it's a beautiful day in Budapest, and we can see right over the bridge. Okay, like, like there was a thing previously, an item, whatever, and it had a lot of cabbage inside previously. But you, or you guys together, you could, you could uh, uncabbage it. So now the thing is very much without cabbage. Thank you very much, good performance. You should visit me next time as well. So this is what it means. <laughs> we have one word to describe uh, this whole thing. So someone had asked a question on why Hungary is so poor uh, compared to Austria and you know to pretty much every other country in the EU. And the guy was explaining that it started during the world wars where they lost a lot of their industry, their our, uh, our culture. They were forced to build uh, buses during Soviet times. And after that, after it collapsed, they're kind of screwed. Uh, but they actually were in a better spot than the rest of the Eastern Bloc countries, yet they've kind of fumbled the ball trying to balance the East and the West, trying to make keep Russia happy while also be part of the EU. So aside from tourism, they don't really have that much other industry right now. That's a shame, it's beautiful. There's lots of history, architecture. But <laughs> terrible politicians. Viktor Orban has been ruling Hungary since 2010. In that time, he's reshaped the country's young democracy into an illiberal state. He's created a system to keep himself in power, strengthen ties with autocrats in Russia and China, and openly challenge the European Union. He's intent on pursuing an alternative to Western democracy, and it appears to be working. So one of my theories is that actually it's to the benefit of the conservative party, the right-wing party, to keep most of Hungary poor. So in Budapest, they can let the city thrive, they can let it be beautiful, they can let you know, companies come in. But the majority of Hungarians need to remain poor in the countryside, because then they'll always vote for the right-wing party that's always saying, you know, we gotta make Hungary great again. We gotta, you know, we gotta, we gotta you know, hungry, hungry first. I think it works in a lot of countries where you have a massive divides. Like in the, the poor you are in Russia, the more you are likely to support Putin actually. It's ironic. You would think it'd be the opposite, but people in Moscow, St. Petersburg don't really support Putin, but the rest of the country where it's poor, they do. To Russia's largest football stadium, they came in their tens of thousands. Not to cheer on their team, but to support their president. From colleges, factories and state enterprises, they'd be bussed in specially for a Kremlin show, designed to show that Russians back President Putin and his war in Ukraine. Inside the stadium, the main event. Vladimir Putin shared the stage with Russian soldiers back from Ukraine. It was Putin who had ordered the full-scale invasion a year ago. From the sound of things, he has no intention of withdrawing his troops. So during World War II, when Hungary joined uh, the Germans and the Nazis, they uh, terminated a lot of Jews, 600,000, more than half a million, but they had them take off their shoes before they shot them and threw them in the river because they were valuable. And now you see 60 pairs, but actually it represents the 600.
So we have to try to sprint across when there's a gap. <laughs> go, go, go on, run, run, run. Go, 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 go. And here we have Parliament, guys. I remember being here, kind of near the start of the war when I was living here. It's a really weird feeling to be back here. I know I've been to Budapest a few times, but the last time I was here was like right, right when the war happened. This is, this is when I left Ukraine. And tomorrow I'm going to be doing the exact same trip, but backwards. So being here, it's kind of trippy to be honest. So guys, that's it. We have our bags. We're on our way to the metro to hopefully get to the railroad station and then hopefully get on the train. All these dudes just coming out of nowhere. Guys, oh, I'm so happy. Everybody wants to stop the war in Ukraine. Making signs here. I remember taking a picture with this horse. See this parliament, but it's very different this time. Well, that's a pretty good walking tour. Uh, I walked went to walk it too, but I think it was a bunch of different tours combined. Lots of people, but nice guy. Got to see uh, some sights, and hear about a little bit of history that I forgot about. And now I'm gonna try to get my first Hungarian meal. It's been a while. All right. What about that? It looks like another tour that's just starting. And tons of people on the weekend. Budapest is. Busy in the weekends, guys. All the cheap flights from London, mostly. Well, so I think this is my friend's gym. We're gonna go right across the street to this restaurant, the Hungarian KFC. Karsisi Vendigo. This is how you know it's good. Handwritten menus, cash only. Looks like the best. Goulash in Hungary, guys. After all these days, a bit of uh, Hungarian bread and chili paste. They call this, I think, paprika paste. Guys, I'm surprised that goulash was really good. This is what I like about this kind of hole in the wall mom and pop shops. Like, good, authentic, home cooked food. I absolutely love it, guys. Definitely not a fancy place, but good family food, guys. More restaurants like this did exist. I actually made a reservation to come here yesterday for, with the boys, and then they messaged me saying, we can't bring the girls here, they're all hated. It's just like, it's too, you know, shitty. Place. And then they booked that nice um, Persian place with the belly latte. So it was cool, but the food here is better. Like, and it's, it's way cheaper, it's way nicer, it's more authentic, it's more Hungarian. I like what I think. I, I don't think I'm, I can ever date a girl who only wants to eat at fancy places all the time. Like once a week or once a month is great, but I like this kind of food most of the time. And I think it's better. I, I think it's, it's just it's better, it's more authentic. And it's not as fancy, but it's not fancy. All right, so I got my first chicken pepperoni, guys. Oh, this looks beautiful, actually. Really, really nice. Guys, I just dug into this. It's amazing. It's actual bone and chicken. It's nice sauce. Sour cream. It's little dumplings. Let's try it. Mmm. Even better with a little bit of this. Spice it up. And a little black pepper, but amazing. This is why they have this on every plate. Just to give it a little kick. Alright, guys, that was a really good meal. It's 5,000 for it, which is 15 bucks. I had a soup and a pretty big meal that's stuffed. But uh, I really like it, guys. I really, really like it. Like, I love places like this. I hope they never go away. Because I feel like all the new restaurants opening are these trendy, cool places, nice for Instagram. 
but places that just have like good food you know kind of like home diners that's kind of a thing of the past and I think we're gonna miss it when they're gone guys at least I will what do you think what do you like more those beautiful Instagramable places or kind of like these traditional kind of mom and pop uh, restaurants like, like you found here home food so as far as visiting Hungary right now while they have Viktor Orban as their president it's probably not the best idea to be honest you know, he's kind of a Putin puppet a little stooge I understand from the tour that they want to they always want to balance east and west but the fact is he's appeasing a dictator warlord that's genociding a, a country it's it's exactly the same as when Hungary chose to side with the Nazis and the Germans and said yeah okay we'll, we'll pick this side <laughs> because they seem pretty strong I mean we don't want to make them upset and maybe they'll give us back uh, some more land and I don't know what the deal uh, Orban has with with uh, Russia but I would not be surprised if they said you know we'll, we'll side with you but if you take Ukraine we want uh, this like Carpathians uh, back to Hungary from you know before World War One, um, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. I don't know what their deal is, but that's kind of the mentality that this is kind of a right-wing conservative party has right now. And that's why nobody in Budapest likes them. Uh, I even saw a mural with a picture of Putin and uh, Orban having all fun together. Look at this random street art. So that's definitely Putin. Uh -huh. Who's this guy he's riding as a horse? So tell me. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban is accused of mismanaging EU funds and dismantling democratic institutions. The money's intended to bring Hungary's economy and infrastructure up to the bloc's standards. So on the topic of Hungarian foods, I realized I had never actually had one of these things yet. These cinnamon things. I just bought one from these guys who make it fresh here. Let's see how it is. It's like bread with a little bit of cinnamon. That's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's not a must have. Is that a Roy's Royce? Some nuts Bentley. Somebody ain't going hungry in Hungary. I think it's just the working class. Because <laughs> there's a lot of money here, guys. I don't know where it's going, whose pocket's getting behind, but there is some money out here. It's crazy. There are some really rich people. Okay, we got a Maserati going by. We've got a, this is a Bentley Rolls Royce. Bentley. And a, uh, a Porsche right after each other. I love turbo too. But it's not going to pocket these guys. 